This quick video will cover the basics of a Teamworks install and configuration. You will still want to consult the documentation and go through the planning worksheet, whether you are doing a single server, small deployment, or a full, large deployment, there are a lot of details to keep track of and a lot of choices to make. I strongly recommend that you keep notes as you go to record the various user objects and passwords that are created along the way. With that in mind, I'm going to jump right into a small, all-in-one deployment. The first step is to get a copy of the software and unzip it, then proceed with deploying the appliance. In my case, I'm using VMware, so I'll create a new VM and select the option to deploy from an OVF file. I do need to select both the OVF and the VMDK files. Then I'll let it run. Note, I don't want this appliance to start automatically when it's finished. Before you start up the appliance, you need to create two additional hard drives. One will hold your data, the other will hold your log files. This is what makes it possible to upgrade to a new version by deploying a new appliance and then simply moving the data disks to that new VM. There are a couple of settings you want to change for these additional drives. The first is size. Give yourself plenty of room following the install guide. You can change the location of the disk if needed, but you do want to make sure it's thick, provisioned, and eagerly zeroed. You also want to make sure the disk mode is set to independent and persistent. Again, so you can move these to a new appliance when it's time to upgrade. The thick provisioning will take a little time to format, so be patient. Once that is done, you can power on the virtual appliance. It should come up to a wizard and ask for the information that will be specific to your system. Accept the license agreement, then enter and confirm the passwords for both the root user of the appliance as well as the VA admin object. Timestamps are important, so some care here as well as for the time zone selection. You will need to enter the host name for the appliance, and if you need to, you can set up proxy information. Network settings are next, and there shouldn't be any surprises here. And this page is where you confirm that the data is going to be stored on that second hard drive we added to the appliance, SDB in my case. And as you might have guessed, the log file location is done on the next screen. Here I'm selecting SDC the third drive we created for this appliance. On my small system, I won't need to worry about remote storage because everything is stored on this single appliance. So that's what I have checked here. And then when you hit next, it will set it all up. The last screen you see is this one, letting you know that the appliance creation is complete. It also gives you the URL information to use to log into the appliance configuration. Note the port number of 9443, this is critical. Actions relating to the actual appliance configuration are available via port 9443. So I'll open a browser and hit that address and log in as the Virtual Appliance Administrator User or VA Admin. Once I'm in, I'm going to click on the double gear icon here. This will launch the configuration wizard and allow me to configure a few more things. The first thing I see is a reminder that I'm setting this up as a single appliance and I'm okay with those limitations. Next, I need to set and confirm passwords for these user objects that are used to accomplish various tasks and responsibilities. Please make a note of what passwords you set. You may need them for troubleshooting down the road. And next, uh, choose your primary language and when you hit next this time, you will see it's actually configuring the system. Once that's done, then the appliance configuration work is complete. Uh, of course, there are a lot of changes that can and probably should be tweaked here. On your production system, you will want to review your Java heap size at a minimum. But for my test system, I'm going to leave everything as is for now. At this point, we are ready to actually administer the system. We do that by opening a browser again and entering the URL to the server, but this time we specify port 8443. 
The credentials you need to use are admin for the user and admin for the password. The first time you log in as admin with the admin password, you will be prompted to change that password. Please do so. And again, there are a lot of options here, but creating a user is my next step. A user ID and password are required. You can add as much of this other information as needed, but for now I'm simply going to hit OK and have the user created. And finally, I'm going to open my browser and point to the server without specifying a port, and I'm now presented with the normal user login page. I'll enter the new user's credentials, and I'm in. If I wanted to, I could watch this quick introduction video, maybe next time. And here is my user space. It's pretty empty for now, but it's ready for action. As soon as I get a few more users created, I'll build some rooms and have a very functional workspace. We've covered a lot of territory in just a few minutes here, so I want to leave you with this overview of the things that gave me trouble. We deployed the appliance, but we didn't start it immediately. We had to add two additional drives to the VM. Both need to be thick provisioned and eagerly zeroed. They are also set up to be independent and persistent. The rest is mostly following the wizards and entering the pertinent information. Please take note of the passwords you use. And finally, a recap of the various port numbers you will need. 9443 is used with the virtual appliance or VA admin user and is used to configure the appliance specific settings. Port 8443 is the one you will use for the regular Teamworks admin work, uh, user management, LDAP setup, things like that. As mentioned, no port is needed for users to log in. Thanks for watching. Additional videos will follow that demonstrate some of the great features available with Groupwise Teamworks. Thank you.